Hi, I'd like to uh, elaborate further on the dovetail jig that I uh, created a video on a couple of videos back on my YouTube channel. And this is the, uh, the same dovetail jig. I've got a tail and a, a pin board already attached for demonstration. And it's spring loaded as I mentioned, but I wanted to uh, dive deeper into the actual dovetail jig and some of the features and the versatility of it. And I'll talk about some of the, uh, the accessories I use with it and uh, some of the accessories I've, I've developed for it or made for it for aligning the uh, tailboard with the pin board and uh, some of the features of it. So stay tuned. I'm Norm Perolo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools. From high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So back to the uh, the dovetail jig, uh, specifically dovetail jig for handmade dovetails and I use it both for through dovetails and half blind dovetails and I've got an, a setup for a half blind dovetail here. It's already been created but I just wanted to demonstrate. To demonstrate for better visualization how I attach the pin board and the tail board and, and, uh, and lay out the lines and transfer the lines from the uh, tail to the pin board. I, I do tails first and all my dovetails so I've never actually done it the other way, so of course you could do it on this too. So the versatility of this uh, dovetail jig is that it, uh, it features two large cleats. Now you could actually change the cleats and beef them up and put them on, on end. If so, you so choose if you, have, uh, if you create much larger drawers, but for the scale of uh, drawers I create, this is an ideal size of cleat so far. And one of the little tricks I use is to have a sheet of sandpaper glued onto the bottom of the uh, cleat. And what this does is it uh, grips the uh, either tail or the pin board very well and I have no problems in it moving out. Without the sandpaper, wood on wood, no matter how tight, how tight you make it, eventually if you're, if you're chiseling away as I demonstrated in my earlier video, it might move. So there's no getting around that. So the sandpaper is, uh, is something I would add to the uh, dovetail jig. One of the uh, criteria for creating dovetails is when you're transferring from a tail board to a pin board is to transfer the, uh, so you just created the tails, in this case two tails, so I need to transfer to a blank pin board, which is the same, uh, the same width as the tail board, is to, uh, is to line them up perfectly on, on end. And this is very, very critical that that be done correctly. And what I've used in the past this is a uh, center finder head from a uh, from a combination square that I picked up at a uh, an estate sale for next to nothing, and this uh, so this is a uh, a star it happens to be a star, but this is a center finder head, and this also has two uh, two faces that are perpendicular to each other at 90 degrees. Although the bearing surface is quite uh, narrow, you can use this to uh, and I'll uh, I'll set up the camera so you can. You can see this better closer. So you can use the uh, center finder head for uh, orienting the, uh, the tailboard to the pin board fairly accurately. That's one option. Another option is a saddle square. This happens to be a Veritas saddle square and it's one of the larger beefier ones. It's anodized aluminum and this works too. I'll delve further into that in the uh, close-up shots. So that lines up that. But the only, the only small disadvantage to this is it's really not intended for that purpose because this moment is, is not long enough. Because one of the criteria is both to line it up at the end and actually to have them in the same plane so they don't, they're not pivoted, they're, uh, they're exactly perpendicular to each other, very critical. So that's uh, two options. And the third option is a saddle score that I've actually created with some offcuts and so 
cost me nothing really. I uh, beefed it up or reinforced it with some uh, some small one eighth dowels, and that, that serves that serves the purpose. It uh, works really well as a saddle square, so it's the right length for this particular dovetail jig. It works really well. And that's the third option. Now the fourth option is very recent, and it's a uh, it's a flip type uh, saddle square that I. I uh, developed and created it, so I had the uh, idea to uh, do this, and I wanted something that didn't uh, stand proud of my tool well and in my uh, on my workbenches. So I wanted something that I could uh, flip open and close, and then when I need it, I can it, it, uh, spring load it so it closes, and it's a uh, it's a saddle square, and it's uh, it's quite a bit of alignment and setup to create it perfectly, but it works really well. And then so when I don't need it, I just load in my tool well like that. I'll just give a demonstration of that also in the close-up shots. So that works really well. So the uh, the premise is to uh, to attach the uh, the pin board and then align the uh, tail board and then hold everything together and just tighten it. It's a one or two hand affair, the tightening. So it works really well. And I've had success with everything here, including this. So, so I'll uh, set up the camera to give a more of a close-up view of uh, of uh, what I've just been discussing. So this is the uh, the dovetail jig on the side of a, the surface of the uh, workbench and this is how I would lay out the uh, the tail and the pin board. So what I'll do is I'll remove the uh, the tail board and I'll remove the pin board and just go through the whole sequence. And you notice these are uh, spring loaded. The cleats will move up automatically and this helps a great deal so it becomes a one-handed thing to uh, to adjust and there's a uh, sandpaper attached to the inside faces of the uh, cleats again you can have larger wider uh, cleats on end bulkier cleats if you uh, work with larger components uh, drawer components I don't so this is a, uh, a pre-made uh, pin board for example I would do this set that up and then just tighten it loosely and then use uh, either my uh, my, sh my shop mate so it's perfectly aligned and it's vertical that's also another another important point is to have it flush with the uh, surface of the uh, of the dovetail jig itself so if I were to, if I needed to transfer these tails to this pin board, I would uh, line it up and use one of the uh, use one of these saddle squares I have, either this one. Again, this is not ideal. It works it works well, but it, you need to grip it very carefully because it's, it's it's a narrow and it pivots also. This is a little more stable. This saddle square is fairly inexpensive too, so that works too. Although I would uh, ideally this would this component here would be longer. You could use that. So I've designed this saddle square for this particular jig and also uh, it's versatile, I can use it for other things, but this it has a long moment so I can uh, set this up and that's, uh, that's perfectly aligned now. Here I'll remove it again and use my, uh, my more recent a flip style saddle square and this is uh, just using I created using some off cuts it cost me nothing and I had the hinge already so I would you flip it put it here and set it up and there's a just a small a thin line here so I know where the uh, how far to go with tails and just uh, I said the sandpaper helps a great deal so once you've got it slightly tightened you can let go of this and uh, not quite not quite far enough there so this would be uh, accurately or precisely set in both both the ends are uh, coplanar with each other and it's uh, exactly perpendicular 
the boards are actually perpendicular to each other in uh, both planes and are not pivoted. And that's what this does. So I'm confirming that with this side. So 90 degrees and 90 degrees. So, so at this point I could transfer the tails. I don't have a marking knife here, but I would normally transfer the tails to the pin board and then uh, remove them and uh, so I can use this dovetail jig also as uh, demonstrated in the previous one uh, second to last video on actually chopping the, uh, the tails or the pins what I would do is uh, for example if I had to chop chop the pin the tails sorry I'd line this up here and I line this up with the baseline so I don't really need to ensure that it's square or anything although I could check for that Let me just But I never really have to do this because I just I use the baseline as an indicator on the cleat. So. Too far back. You can clamp it down. And then what I do is I just uh, I just chop away. I usually go uh, halfway down and then flip the board over and do the other half without actually touching the uh, the surface of the dovetail jig with a, with a chisel. And again, this also the dovetail jig itself protects your uh, workbench surface. And you can also place a small board, a small thin one eighth board underneath the dovetail the tail board. And that or pin board and that protects it and I'll just set up the uh, so that's the tail board now if I were the pin boards are always thicker because it's a drawer front and that's a drawer side so I need to release that the springs really make a difference so I would line this up like this with the baseline again I could use a combination square or engineer an engineer square and then chop away. This is a little different when you're uh, cleaning out uh, pins. You don't ever go to the bottom so you don't have nothing to flip around and it's just a matter of chisel work then. So that, uh, that's how I use the dovetail jig. I have two of these jigs and I've been using them for uh, 18 years now. So I think all my dovetails are created on this. So something I developed uh, going on 20 years almost I would say. So that's how the, uh, the dovetail jig works and I've kind of been using it for uh, quite a number of years and I've, these are the uh, accessories I use to align the uh, tail and pin board and uh, as I've just demonstrated. So this is my most recent addition. It's, uh, it flips and it's pretty cool actually. So I can lay this down on my tool well when I'm not using it and I do use it. Now it's very versatile. I don't need to use it specifically for, uh, for my dovetail jig. I can use it for aligning anything else on um, both the horizontal and the vertical plane. The transferring layout lines on the boards and that sort of thing. So. so thank you for watching and I hope you gained some, uh, some more information on the dovetail jig in this, uh, in this video. And, uh, I do offer plans for it at woodskills.com along with my books and uh, online courses on furniture making as, as I refer to in the introduction to this video. So uh, enjoy your dovetailing. <laughs>